Hi, welcome to Bobby's Viral Friends. I'm Bobby Collins. Uh, it's I don't I don't know Zoom. I'm a moron. These guys are looking at me like I am. Uh, I got two special people, and they're New Yorkers, so I feel extra special talking with these guys. One's an actor, a comedian. You've seen him on, oh God, Law and Order, Seinfeld, Mad Men, NYPD Blue. He was played Ray Romano's best friend in Gia as Gianni, and everybody loves Raymond. He's in different movies. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome John Manfalotti. Hello, everybody. You forgot that I played his bookie, you backstabber. <laughs> <laughs> along, along with John, another friend that we've all come up together as comic circus people, Carney. He's an A-list <laughs> comic. He's an actor. Uh, you might have seen him on television, and everybody loves Raymond. Besides that, a movie man, Ice Age, bad education, Paddleton, the Irishman, uh, and more importantly for in my life, I have a special needs daughter and every time I pick up the phone to call this man to come out to do a special thing for the kids, the special kids in this world, he just drops what he's doing and does it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Romano, Ray! <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the intro was so long. Gotta go. My God, look at my beard grew during that intro. And here they are. Here they go. Unbelievable. John, I haven't seen you win. Uh, the first thing that pops into my mind is the taping of Caroline's down at the seaport. Wow. That's wow. 25, That's 20, 25 26 years, years ago. ago. Yeah, I know. I haven't seen you in that long, man. You look great. Thanks. Smile. Man. John, smile for him, though. Why do you got to do that, man? I had a tooth knocked out. <laughs> I banged heads with my dog. Look. Oh. Yeah, hey, let me see. Oh, that's a great dog. You're damn right. Best sex I ever had. Where are you, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Where are you now? In New York? Who, me or Ray? Yeah, you. No, I've been in L.A. since 94. Oh, we're both oh. in L.A. Are you in New York? No, I'm in uh, Santa Monica, California. Oh my God, I'm waiting for the red uh, carpet because the, the pandemic has really put things. Rich people giving other rich people awards. That's what I'm going to be around. Oh God, I'm going to vomit. Ray, how are you hanging in there, buddy? I'm, I'm here, man. I'm doing, I, I, I've got Zoom fatigue. Oh. I mean, it's, it's, it's Zooming all the time. I'm in the house with my grown-up kids. They came back. They all oh. came back. <laughs> yeah. And, and cool. you were working on something for HBO Max, if I can remember. Yes. I, we did six episodes of this show that's going to be on HBO Max. We, got about, we have three more to go. Exciting. We them. Where I have, I have sex with a, uh, <laughs> what, well, they call it a synthetic partner, but it's a sex doll. My character... <laughs> is having a relationship with a sex doll. And I told him, I'm not going back to work till the doll gets tested. Right. <laughs> so so it's, it's a synthetic doll, so nothing's changed. Oh, I see. Yeah. It doesn't exactly. have to blow it up now, though. Don't have to blow it up. It's high end. It's high end, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I had a sex doll, but when I blew it up, I was too lightheaded to have sex with it. <laughs> I felt dizzy. I had to deflate it. Oh, John, it's good seeing you, man. It's been a while. Ray, Bobby, you remember Ray, that gig? You remember the gig we did in Florida like 30 years ago? Tell me. It was, I don't even remember where it was. What we, was it, fun? It was fun, yeah. It was some weird gig in some place that didn't look like a comedy club. It was bizarre. I remember. You stop I remember. and see how many, how many places we've played. And Bobby, it wasn't really a club. It was a restaurant that had a back room. Exactly. You know, oh my God. Oh you my God. got to start God. somewhere. Oh, By the way, this is the this is probably the grayest hair all three of us have ever had, right? <laughs> well, my hair hasn't been this long. <laughs> I like the beard. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, you're it. You're right, Ray. She cut my hair the first week I came home, March 5th. And I look like Gumby. So she's the, yesterday she said, let me, let me just cut it. No, I'm good. I'm good. Love you. I'm good. Yeah, no. I can't let anyone cut my hair besides a professional. Right. And now my haircut is hiding behind the drapes waiting for a vaccine. By I the know. way, showering too. I don't know what you're, what you're showering, uh, how frequent.
where you guys are in pandemic, but I've noticed that um, after three three days of not showering, the gross factor is not that much different from four days. You know, you max out. <laughs> it, it flattens. I hear you. The, flat gross the, curve, the gross curve flattens from three to four. Yeah. Right. Right. But I've, I've gone like, I've, it's been a while since I've gone four days without showering. It's easy though now. Right? Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I don't take some pills, so I, ha I get up to pee a lot more. The, pee, the uh, pills slow me down. Now, it's not only not a steady slow, but the slow, but there's a little spray going off to the side. Oh, no. You need the blinders like the horses wear. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I shower more during the pandemic. Not Ray. It's Ray, you don't have to leave the house, but I got to go to Ralph's and buy eggs. And, you know, suddenly to someone two feet away, I can't wait to come home and shower them off me. Oh. So I'm showering more than I ever have. I leave hey. the house. Kate, could you could we ever perform to people in masks? I couldn't. I don't know. I don't. What's gonna happen with stand up? I, I gotta tell you, man. It's gonna stand up's gonna be unfortunately probably one of the last things that comes back because you're talking about a room full of people sitting next to each other, and the purpose is to get them to blow air out of yeah, their mouth. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Right. Oh, it's gonna be horrible. I mean, we got gigs. John and I have gigs in uh in Vegas, Vegas in uh, what do we got? October, November, December. O October and December, but those aren't going to happen. I, how can they happen in the theater? No you know, in, in the Mirage Theater, how are they going to happen? Twelve hundred people, oh, unless God. they, unless they, unless they just do half seating or something, you know. I have gotten calls. I have gotten two calls at the theaters that I work, and one guy said, "Hey, Bob, we're the small theater. We seat five hundred, but would you come in and do two shows instead of one?" And I'll cut it down to 75 people, but the VIPs, we give, I go, what does that mean? He goes, well, we'll give them a bottle of wine. And I go, oh, so two show. I go, I, I, I'd give it a shot. Where's that? that? Good to me. Where, where is that? In a, the, in a Jersey. In a casino? No, not in a no, casino. No, Jersey theater, small theater, seats five. So they're going to take 500 seats and just put 75 people 75 in, in them. What are you going to do? Them. I don't know. Oh. That's then time. I got a call for a drive-in. Remember drive-ins? Right. Well, you know, I, I would say, though, 75 people laughing out of 500, you're used to that kind of response. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I told... Uh, <laughs> I made myself laugh with that one. <laughs> John, you know what, you know what it's going to be like? Like the, the, the comics that go to the comedy cellar now in New York, right. they're going to see what it's like to perform in the cellar when there's only 15 people. That, that's how we did it every that's night. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You're, You're right. going to learn. <laughs> that's every how you time get I stop down on the cellar, I really look at it like I, I walk in, they go, <laughs> Bobby, would you go on? Sure. And I look at it like a challenge because they look like they're 12. So yeah, if you yeah. can bring them to you, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's your work. That's why yeah. I stopped doing colleges a long time ago. Oh, yeah. They just didn't get me, you know what I mean? Especially now with politically correct stuff. Do you see some of these comics performing on Zoom? No. But I saw Joey Cola do stand-up on Facebook. That's I was one laughing my ass off. He did good? Remember? Yeah, he was really funny, man. Good. Right in but front of his fireplace. Kind of, but it can't, God, I, I, I mean, it really kind of uh, scares me a little that we, I mean, I don't see how it's going to come back. I mean, yeah. not for a while. <clears throat> and for us, it's like taking our superpower away. That was the I one mean, superpower we had was be know, able, to be able to go on stage and make people laugh, you and know? Remember, our, all our insecurities, whether in Queens, New York, Brooklyn, all our insecurities as kids, now it's coming up and coming back to eat us. Because now we're standing on the stage and we're going... Oh, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know. You know, the new material. I shouldn't you talk about the pandemic. I, 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 I. Yeah. That's another thing is what is, is your material going to have to all be updated and all be, you know, is it even going to, uh, uh, is it, it's, it's going to feel outdated now when you talk about, oh, I was at a ball game and I remember, no, you weren't. You right. weren't at a ball game. Right. A well, guy wearing a Gilligan shirt is a guy wearing a Gilligan shirt. You know what I'm saying? That never changes. 
<laughs> you, you're talking about your insult comedy. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember the last gig we did in Vegas with uh, Italy was already being hit and yeah. I did some joke about it and they didn't like it at all. Remember oh, that? Really? Yeah. Really? The was Q&A it? when I was telling the joke yeah. and I mentioned Italy and you'll get the corona or whatever. The audience, yeah. they didn't like it. They didn't like it. Yeah, well, we didn't even know what we were in for then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right, exactly. right. And the last thing I did was down in Florida, Comics for a Cause, Ray. We did it down there in uh, uh, Boca Raton. And we sold out. And I'm looking at the audience. I go, I mean, you're out here in Florida. It's jammed. There's a virus going on. And no one's, it's sold out. Yeah, well, that was right, right borderline, probably right before. The, right. The, the, it was yeah. that yeah. next day. Everyone cleared out of the hotels and stuff. Well, when there's a vaccine, comedy will come back. But who yeah, knows when that will be. What do we do in the meantime? I was talking to a boxer yesterday, a boxer. He's a real big guy. And he goes, Bobby, what's been going on? I go, well, I'm spending time with my family. And I, I like that. I haven't done, I haven't been off two weeks in 40 years. So wow. he said to me, I go, I'm a little intimidated about if I had to jump on the stage, Ray, like we were talking about. If I had to jump on stage, there's a part of me that I would be questioning my material. What did yeah. I do? And he looked at me and he said, Bobby, you, you've been doing this a long time. We call that bo uh, boxer's uh, rust. I go, what is that? He right. goes, after we do a, a one or two rounds, we're back. Same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, that's the same thing. Yes. When I haven't been on stage in a long time, and I, let's say I'm going to go do a, a weekend at the Mirage, the first show is always a little nerve wracking because right. am I going to remember? Do I have my life? And then once the first one's done, you're back in. But this time you've got to test. It's like testing the material. Is the material, even though it feels a little outdated, right. Right. are they still going to be willing to go with the premise? Yes. You know, this, is where, this is where I want to work in a comedy club first, just to get right. my footing, you know. And then also, are you, do you feel not not current if you don't have pandemic material you right know? right and they've heard so much about it do you want to bring it up to them but you have and it's the way we bring it up to them. Right, so right, right my theory is or my hunch people are going to be so happy to be back that they're going to laugh their asses off right they're going to kill that's my hunch. they're going to be so happy to be there you're right just curious before you ray john before you go up if I'm at a theater, if I'm in Las Vegas, do you have a little superstition? Like I, I sit there and I, they, I know I'm up in five minutes. I, I just say a little conversation with God. I said, hey, God, let's have some fun tonight. Let me feel what they're like. That, do you guys do any of you do that? I, I definitely do that. I got yeah. two things I do. One is I find a place on the floor, and I, like a dot or a mark, and I stare at it till... I don't see anything but the dot, and really? that helps me focus. Nice. And then I always say to myself, though, can I still do this? Well, wait a minute. I've done it for 30 years. I've done thousands of shows and thousands of hours. So, you know, once I, my foot touches that stage, I'll be all right. But that staring at that dot thing really focuses me. But you, um, you also, like when we do Vegas, John, so John goes up first. Right. The show starts at, what does it start, about 10, 15 p.m.? He's always leaving the room. I always make fun of you because you're leaving the room at 9.45. And, and it's a 90-second it's a walk to the theater. <laughs> from the room. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you, I got to get backstage. I got to get gotta backstage. I got to be ba backstage getting my head ready. You know? Interesting. <laughs> Look at us. Look at us. That's but he's back. Here's the thing, Bobby. Yeah. He's backstage for 30 minutes. He's on stage for 11. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't come here to be insulted. Yeah. Oh, I know. You, you got me twice. Oh. Yeah. You're supposed to say, where do you usually go? Oh. What the hell? What the hell's going on? Do you I tell you what, this pandemic better end soon because oh, God. my dog is starting to look delicious. Oh, hey, wait. Wait. Have you put on weight? Uh, actually, no, to be honest with you. You've been well, working I've, out? I, I've, I've found that I'm eating, I'm probably eating more, but, I, but I'm so bored that I'm working out more, too. Right. You know? right. I walk a lot, you know? It's kind of a push. It's kind of a push. 
Although my daughter's bored, so she's baking every single day. <laughs> oh, no. She really is. Every day I would wake up, something smells like some cake, something smells, you know. Um, so I, I am eating. So, But I'm right now I'm kind of, the weight is kind of staying the same, you know. Nice. Nice. Um, I found out, though, you can lose two. I, I'm, I'm doing things <clears throat> that I would never have time to. And one of them was to prove my theory that you can lose up to two and a half pounds peeing. And so <laughs> every day, every day I'm, I'm documenting it, you know, totally naked. I, I step on the scale before I pee, then I pee, then I step on the digital scale after I pee. And it's, this is not a, 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 a one day thing. This is, you know, totally documented by, by uh, trial and error. And two and a half pounds, I'm telling you, uh, I, I could win a, bet, a bar bet that way, but I don't think we'll ever be able to guess. Do you know people are hearing this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, really, are there really people hearing this? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I started to do these videos, these short one-minute videos, and I put them out there just for my own sanity. They hit so big in this country that Shane called. He goes, why aren't we doing a podcast? I go, Oh, I don't want to talk there. I, so when did you start comedy? Yeah, and then when right, did we right. work? Yeah. I don't want to know that. And he goes, would you perform? No, because you're, you're seeing people. Hey, two Jews. Right? Yeah. I said, what I would do is talk to guys that I know that were sitting just before in the green room and they were just, we live in a different world. And we're just fucking around talking and laughing because out there scares the shit out of us. Yeah, exactly. And we feel most comfortable with each other. What kind of videos will you do in one of those short ones? Were they sketches oh. or just you doing bits? Oh, little sketches, sketches. I'd be standing out and I'm walking. I'm going, look at this. Nobody on the street. I go, and then I just drop my pants in my underwear. These, <laughs> and I, you know, things like, it's hey, funny. You know, I, made a, I made a TikTok in that vein. I made a, I don't even know what TikTok is, but my daughter set it up. So I made my own. I made my own TikTok video. Who else you had on your show? George Wallace. Oh, yeah. I got uh, Chris Rock coming up. Oh, nice. I had uh, uh, Colin Quinn. Nice. nice, nice. And uh, I, the two guys that opened for me, they switch off that in theaters. Uh, Chris Roach, he was the next New York cop. No chance. And uh, John Ziegler. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, being on this Zoom show. Wow. Wait, say that again. Then a big, he told me to show a, up twice, and I'm his guest. <laughs> say that again, and then a big smile without the tooth after. This is the best thing that's <laughs> ever happened to me. <laughs> you really won't embarrass me in front of national television. It's not <laughs> national. 11 people see this. <laughs> yeah. Who's funny in your house growing up? Guys. Oh, my older brother was hysterically funny. Was he? Yeah. Really, unbelievably sarcastic, but really funny. That's where I got the you, I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, John and I have been friends for a long time. Right. I met John when I passed at the Improv in New York. I met John when I went to the, they, they had an improv softball team. Oh. And, uh, and I went to the first practice and I was a young comic. I just passed at the Improv. Right. That's, that's when I met you first. And then, so we've been friends ever since. Uh, so John knows I'm, I'm fucked up, you know, and, <laughs> we're all fucked up. Right. Yeah, exactly. So the funniest thing though, I'm going to quote you, John, we'll <laughs> you know, you know what quote I'm going to do. Yeah. The funniest fuck thing. It up. <laughs> so first of all, you need a little backstory, quick backstory. I make mind bets with myself. So in other words, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I was trying to, get off of gambling. I'm, I'm, I'm a reformed gambler. So okay. I would make mind bets with myself. So I would say like, okay, if I don't shoot an 88 in golf, I can't golf again for another three weeks. You know, I'll make that mind right. bet. Oh, I, got I, have, it. I have to stick with it. It's, it's, you know, I'm neurotic with it. So John and I, when we were doing the road together, you know, when I, during the Raymond days, he would come and open up for me. And we had a little tour together. And John was an avid golfer also. Oh, and we really? used to love we used to love when we'd go on the road because we'd take our clubs and we'd golf. And I remember one week, <laughs> I lost a mind bet. So 
we were on our way to Dallas and I told John, I go, I go, and he was all psyched to go and play golf. And I go, John, uh, don't bring your clubs to Dallas because uh, I lost a mind bet and I can't golf. And John, he took a beat and he went, you know, because when you were eight, your father stuck his thumb in your ass. I can't golf now in Dallas. <laughs> Uh, did I did I screw it up? Yeah, no, you screwed it's it up. good. You screwed uh, it up. What what was the what was the quote? It was he goes, John, we can't golf now. I lost the mind bet. And I went, Your father stuck his thumb in your ass when you were seven. Now I can't golf. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I flipped it. It was good. It was good. But you know what? When you tell that story, you can't tell me we can't golf. Because then you're ruining the punch on now I can't, I can't golf. golf. Yeah, I got to punch up everything this guy does, and he made it. This well, is I gotta say, thing. don't bring your clubs. I gotta say, don't bring your yeah, clubs. don't bring your clubs. I lost the mind. I lost bet. the mind bet. Yeah, okay. yeah. Where okay. did we meet? Where did we meet? New York. Where did where? I meet you, Bobby? The clubs? I don't know. Uh, I'm wondering if I met you like at the Rainy Night House or Rascals, one of them. You know. Right. Okay. Did you? Cause you worked the city, but not a lot, right? No, I was, uh, I, I started at that Good Times. Remember Good Times, that little place with Rico and his wife on like 29th, 30th Street and 3rd Avenue? Never worked there. The most nervous I ever was at a stand-up gig or an audition was when I auditioned at the Improv in New York. Really? I was so freaking, because it was so famous. Right. And I was doing comedy maybe a year and a half, you know? And I remember watching my shirt go, you know, do this before I went on. But I passed the first time. And uh, she didn't, didn't pass everybody the first time. So I felt good that about it. That was my first time. My first time ever on stage was the improv in New York. Wow. And I didn't, I didn't pass the first time. You know, uh, I don't know, Bobby, if you know, but you, you, they had audition night once a month there. Right, right. Sunday, and you had to go down during the afternoon and pick a number out of a hat. Get a number. Get a number. Right, because right, there'd be like 50 guys with only 20 spots. <laughs> right. So they, you pick out of a hat. If you got a number, you went on. So I remember the, the second or third time I took somebody with me. I took a girl that I was working with. I wasn't dating her. I was just a friend. And I said, listen, you pick a number. I'll pick a number. And if you get the number, you know, they immediately ask you what your name is. So you say Jackie Roberts. I gave her an androgynous name. Right. You know, good, you good. Number, and then I'll go on that night as Jackie Roberts. <clears throat> right. What happened? I went on that night as Jackie Roberts. Silver called me over. She passed me. I didn't want to tell her that that wasn't my name. <laughs> but for the first three months, I was Jackie Roberts as, as, in, at the improv. That's you incredible. Know that? That's, That's a good you know one. That story? I don't remember that, Ray, because I was established and you were a new guy. I wouldn't bother. No, but I must have told you that story. I didn't tell you. I know. Story. No, I've heard that story. It's fantastic. Oh, okay, yeah. god. oh my God. Did you tell That's Bobby who got story. you into the cellar? What's that? Yeah. Did you tell he Bobby got who got you into the cellar, you son of a bitch? Well, John then, got uh, then, in? well after about, whatever it was, about seven, eight months at the improv trying to work my way up. And then I, they, John called one night and said, hey, I'm at the cellar. Some comic dropped out. They need somebody in like 20 minutes. Can you get down here? And, and I go, oh, shit. I went, yeah, yeah. And then before I hang up, he goes, don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because who, Manny, was, who, was, uh, who ran the cellar back then? The father? Man Manny. Manny. Right. Manny. And he would always be walking around with his dog, his little dog in one hand and his glass of scotch in the oh. other hand. And by the end of the night, he was drinking out of the dog and petting the scotch. Yeah. <laughs> But so what happened that night? He came over and he said, do you know it? What I loved about Manny is the littlest thing, he would be panicking. He came up. I know, and, I know. Mayor Filotti, Mayor Filotti, I need a comic. We had a drop. He goes, I don't know who to call. Can you recommend anybody? So his, I go, son, his son is like a coma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I go, you know what? There's a new guy at the improv named Ray Romano that's pretty funny. And he's kind of a good guy. You know, he goes, call up the improv. I called up the <laughs> improv and uh, is Ray there? And the next thing he hears, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, you know oh, what? Okay. The only part of that story I regret is 
I couldn't stay and watch your set because I had to run to Caroline's, you know? Um, those were the what, days where you're we running. Did. Look what we did all the time. I know. It's a, remember those days where you do eight, nine shows a night on a Friday or Saturday? I would, yes, yes. My record was seven. I did seven. That was my record, seven. Nine was mine. What was... Uh, nine. Uh, one day, what did I do? Fuck, I can't remember. I left. Oh, I walked out of the improv, uh, the Catch Rising Star. <clears throat> I had just performed. I was getting ready to run down to do some other set somewhere. And then all of a sudden, Manny was there. And he said, hey, can I talk to you? I went, sure, I got to get going. You know, I thought he was just a customer saying, nice job. And I, he said to me, uh, hey, listen, I got, a, I got a club in the village. I go, where in the village? He said, McDougal Street. I went like this. I live on 12th and Broadway. He goes, we'd, we'd love to have you work there. I go, I I'm in. And yeah. I started going to the uh, cellar. That's when, yeah. and Esty was the door girl. That's right. <laughs> Don't let her care. You call her the door girl. I know. I know. Oh, you well, know, now she it's served a, in now the village. Like, well, you know, it's incredible now because now they bought the club around the corner, the Village Underground. Yes. And they have three shows every night, sold out, seven nights a week, four Friday, four Saturday. Right. Wow. And then at the Village Underground, where it used to be music, they took the music out. The co same thing with the comedy. And now- and, up and upstairs, right? Yeah, they have a little lounge little upstairs. Little lounge. Yeah. I walk in, I see Colin Quinn doing his latest subway routines. I'm crying. And then <laughs> and we started, John and I were there when, and Bobby, you were there too, when they used to have to have the waitresses sit in the audience to look like right. there were people, so exactly. when people came down, they would come in. Right, yeah. right. Unbelievable. One time, uh, I was I came in on a Saturday night for the third show, and I had been on the second show, so yeah. I, I was booked for the third show. When I walked in, Esty said to me, "Oh, man, Filati, I just want to let you know we didn't have enough people coming in for a full third show, so we let people from the second show stay." So they, and they had seen you already. Have, they know yeah. some people have seen you already. So I remember saying, well, I'll make fun of a different guy with a shirt on. Right. right? So then in comes Frankie Pace. <laughs> and she tells Frankie Pace, she goes, Frankie, she tells him the same thing she told me. We're going to have the same audience. And he had been on. And he goes, what? Well, what, what the fuck am I going to do? I said, go home and get the other suitcase. <laughs> well, you got you to gotta explain that. You got to explain what, what that joke means. I got to explain to you guys. You know him. Well, but right. we, hopefully someone else is watching. Oh, he was a prop comic, ladies and gentlemen. So he had all his stuff come out of his suitcase. <laughs> yes. awesome. Thanks, Ray, for saving me. Isn't yeah. it wild? Isn't it wild when you run into some of the guys? I mean, we all started basically together in New York. We knew how to go different sets, run to Jersey. Oh, I can make fifty tonight in Jersey rather than my fifteen dollars at the Catch right. Rising Star. And now you run it. I run into some comics. They go, Bobby, I opened for you at uh, at Governors, or I opened for you at, at uh, Rascals. And I go, that's thirty years ago. Well, you know, I, I don't. I, re I just remember where we met. <clears throat> where? I was the house MC at the comic strip in Fort Lauderdale. Wow! And you came down to work. So that must yeah, have been eighty four, probably eighty four. Oh my God! Yeah, because or maybe the beginning of '85, because I moved back to New York in April of '85. Yeah. That's what, that's yeah. what, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Remember Joe Mullen? Oh man! Yes. Oh <laughs> shit! Yeah, he was a trip. Yeah, I thought uh, it was Florida. I remember you telling me it was Florida. Yeah. Right, you never worked there, right? Florida? Yeah, yeah that comic strip in Lauderdale. No, no. I mean, I've done Florida, but just gigs, you know. Yeah. I started about six months after Brian Regan and uh, Jeff Garland started. Brian mm -hmm. Regan was the house MC when I started. Brian Regan? What? The, the comic. Yeah, Brian Regan, the comic. Even then, he was a prolific, pro prolific writer. And he had a yeah. brother who was a good uh, comic. Yeah. Too. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis Regan. Yeah. Dennis. Yeah. He was a nice guy. And Jeff Garland also started about six months before me. I stopped in at the improv here maybe about five months ago, just coming home from something. Uh, Hermosa Comedy and Magic Club. And yeah. I stopped in at the improv and Garland had his own show upstairs somewhere in a little area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Bobby Cole, we were laughing. I just, I hadn't the, seen The him. improv on Melrose? That yeah. The improv? Yeah. I, I guess wonder. they have little rooms now, but again, they're 11 years old too. 
Yeah. I, I worry working. about what's going to happen to those clubs, not these clubs, not the big name clubs, but right. the, the clubs that are on the border, you know, on the, on the fence there. Right. What's I mean, going to happen is they're going to go out of business. They're going to, the guys are going to wind up in the street. The children will be eating out of the garbage and it's going to be horrible. <laughs> anyway, have a good night. Yeah. But listen, good seeing you. Yeah, drive safe. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Hey guys, this was probably my my funnest and my best one. Our Innista. I want to thank you guys so much. John right. Mantelotti, Ray Romano. John, where can people get in touch? You know, what's the technology bullshit? Instagram. Uh, nowhere, Bobby. I want people leaving me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be in a movie at some point in the future. But I'm not going to mention when or what it is. Or He's going to be in my movie. Yeah! I'll uh, mention it. Uh, we, were ready, we were ready to start a movie that I wrote and I was going to direct. And we were four weeks away from starting shooting. Oh, oh! Yeah. When this whole thing went down. But It'll uh, come back. You'll be going back. It's Hollywood. You know. I, I finally get a good movie role and there's a fucking pandemic. <laughs> a pandemic! I can't win! Oh, God. Hey, maybe by the time oh. we come back, you'll have your tooth. So it'll, yeah, that's it'll true. Good. That's true. Ray, where can people? Ray Romano on I, Instagram. I'm not, I am not on any of that. I love that. I love that. New York, guys. And you can follow me online at bobbycollins.com and at the Bobby Collins on Instagram. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to Bobby's Viral Friends on Spotify, iTunes, or Google Play. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Hey, thanks so much. We'll see you soon.